Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new segment called Blunder of the Day. This is the first day of the Chessable Masters by Chess24, and this is what I thought was the most critical error of the day and the most sort of fun one to, to understand what happened. So in this position, that is a game between uh, Artemyev and Dubov. Uh, Dubov had been fighting for equality for the whole game, and he's finally achieved it. And he's got a good move here. White has just played rook to c7, putting some pressure on black, but black could simply recapture on c7. And here, after rook c8, that c-pawn is actually quite weak. White does have a couple of tactical ideas to try not to simply lose a pawn. The best of them is probably bishop d5 check, king f8. And now it's still impossible to defend this pawn, but white can at least chase that knight back. Um, or chase it, chase it away, should I, I should say. Uh, but Black will take this pawn and probably have some small chances to win, maybe even some reasonable chances to win. But let's look at what what happened here because it's a it's a big it's a big mistake and it's sort of imperceptible. He plays a natural move, Bishop to e6. So he's threatening to play Rook takes e7, Pawn takes c7, Rook takes d4. Seems safe enough, and he's probably thinking at some point I'm going to be able to circle this pawn and maybe I'll be able to to, to grab it eventually. Uh, but look what happens here this is a big blunder the evaluation goes from better for black to just completely losing like down a rook kind of losing minus five after bishop d5 so this book does a few things and it's 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 surprising how strong it is first of all any of the captures so rook takes d6 simply doesn't work because we take on c8 and that bishop is pinned right so this is a, a critical thing same same idea if black plays rook takes c7 pawn takes c7 simply we could also take on e6 that would also win but here the rook is attacked the bishop is attacked and if black plays rook takes d5 we simply take that bishop can't leave because we make a queen so this is completely winning white is going to be able to play rook d8 next and win the game so after bishop d5 he does the the most natural move here he plays bishop takes d5 white simply takes back and now it's it's amazing actually how quickly things have turned the knight is forced to move right we can't defend it with the rook because the rook is still forced to defend the rook on c8 so that doesn't work uh we can't take on c7 because we'll simply take and there's this is attacked uh and we'll have rook d8 check or we could take the knight next move um so he's forced to move the knight after rook takes d5 he goes knight f7 and now look at this move knight to c6 He's attacking the rook on d8, but an even bigger threat is to play knight e7 and win a full rook. And amazingly here, there's really absolutely nothing that, that black can do. Uh, every move loses, you know, loses more than just a, more than just an exchange. So, uh, what can we look at? There's actually not very much to look at. If rook takes c7, pawn takes c7, the point is still that we can't take on d5 because of c8. Uh, c8 queen check before black has time to deliver checkmate on checkmate on the back um so yeah there's not there's not much the only other move like let's say we try to play here uh this is just gonna be it's just a disaster white white probably starts by playing d7 eventually they'll take this rook uh the position is completely it's a goner so dubov just just resigned after knight c6 so quite a turn of events that's the first blunder that did blunder of the day and we'll be back we'll be back tomorrow because uh there will always be there will always be some mistakes to look at and learn something from thanks for joining me <laughs>